So now with this lesson, we'll continue our exploration of skeletons and bones by looking at a more advanced type of character. So in this case, we've got your typical humanoid character mesh in the form of this flash character. And we're going to be putting skeletons into this character along with weight maps to make it um, fully posable and ready for animating in layout. So the first step is to think about the type of skeleton we're going to use for this character. In this case, we, I'm starting off with a skeleton already there to show you. So let me go ahead and just light that up. All right, so if you look at this, you'll see that this character has bones in the legs and in the torso, but there's nothing there connecting the two. As we move up the chain, we split out into arms, neck and head, and then ultimately our articulated hands with fingers. As we go down, <clears throat> we've got feet, heels, ankles, and then the legs are pretty simple. Some bone spurs there in the knees. All right, so let's go ahead and start to flesh out this character. And to do that, I will go ahead and get rid of these bones, or these skeletons, I should say. And we'll start from scratch. I'm going to start drawing in what's my back view over here. I'm going to go ahead and close this out, hit the A for auto fit. Let's go to the setup tab and grab the create skeletons tool. And we're just going to click and drag upwards for that initial bone excuse me, initial skeleton. Um, now, it's a good idea to do this in layer two rather than layer one. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that to take that away. And I'm just gonna start in layer two and put layer one in the background. And let's work that way, it's much better. Let's click create skeletons, click and drag from the belly button up for that lower back. And now, of course, for the children, we're just going to click and then click again to make the rest of our spine. I'm clicking over here to the arm, to the base of the arm. And I want to kind of be in the middle of that arm, so right about there would be good. That's fine. I can always adjust this later with the drag tool. Let me go back to my quad view here, and you can see exactly what this looks like from all different angles. Now, my next step, I'm going to go into a top view and do a little tiny socket bone. And you don't need to do this socket. Some people don't actually use it, but some people find that I think that it gives you a little more natural rotation for the shoulder joint area. But it's really, um, it's really kind of optional. But I'll go ahead and add it. And here we go. Just going to go back straight away and then out here to the elbow and then to the wrist and let me just stop there hit the return key to make that and then come back and look at what I've got so go to my quad view you can see in my top view that I'm sticking straight out because I drew these skeletons in the top view and I couldn't see what I was doing they simply went straight out so this is an opportunity to go in and use that drag tool let me go full screen here A for auto fit Modify drag, and I'm going to use that drag tool to just put these in the middle. That simple. And maybe I'll just bring this down a little bit as well. Good enough. All right, let's go back to a quad view and see what that looks like. Here's my perspective view. Now I'm hitting A for auto fit and using these little windows so you can see what I'm clicking there. All right, so there's my arm. Now what I need to do is evolve the hand. So to do the hand, I might focus on two different views. I might go into my back view 
and my top view. So remember to continue along a chain, to continue your children in the uh, skeletons, you need to go in, deactivate the tool, select the lowest skeleton you want to continue from. I'm in polygon edit mode. I go to the setup tab and I choose create skeletons, and then I just continue my chain where I left off by selecting that. So I'm going to come over here to the knuckle. Now, if I do it on top view, I'm going to end up going straight out again. So maybe it's better to come in here and try it. So let's do that. Now, of course, that was great. It didn't go straight out. But the problem is, of course, over here is that it's going to the wrong finger. So the bottom line is you're, you're never going to get it perfect. And you never, ever, ever want to go ahead and draw skeletons in the perspective view. Please do not try. Stick to your orthographic views. Now, maybe the side view would have been a better choice, but it's just, you're never gonna get it perfect. So let's just continue the chain and then adjust it later. We know that our finger is gonna need a hand for the palm and then three bones for each finger. So I'm just gonna click one, two, three, okay? I'll use my drag, I'll hit the return key to make it, use my modified drag tool to put those into place now. So I'm going to go over here, that should come with it, that should go there, and that as well. Now, obviously that's not correct, but I can fix it here. It takes multiple views to get this right. So just be aware, it's not going to be perfect. Now even there, it's still not perfect, because I can see in my side view that it needs some adjusting. So this is a good example of why you need quad views, why you need to see the entire big picture because it's going to be different from every angle. In order to get a good result, you need to use all your views. Now, I'm not going to ever draw or edit in my perspective view, but I will look at it to see how good a job I did. Here, it really is very honest. It tells me exactly where the mistakes are, and I can see in the pinky I could do that a little bit better. So I'm going to drag over here, but I'm not dragging again in the perspective view. I'm using my orthographic views. I can see here it goes beyond. I want to pull that in until everything in perspective view looks correct. Now that looks centered. It looks like the bones are the right length. They start at the knuckle. They look good. All right. So do the best you can, but use multiple views to get it right. So get, get the, um, the perspective you think it should have. And if, if, again, you can't tell in your orthographic views, you can angle your perspective view to sort of see what you're changing. So in other words, when I use the side view, I'm looking here. So I'm editing here, but I'm looking over there. So now as I move this, I can see, oh, yeah, it kind of flares out. That looks better. And now just check underneath to see if that works. And sure enough, there you go. On to the next finger. So there's going to be a lot of repetition here. Hopefully this will help you learn it. We'll go in now, drop the drag tool, going to select the forearm once again. And we're going to build out this chain again. So we're going to go to the Setup tab, Create Skeletons. And I'm going to click to the knuckle. One, two, three. Now you can see I've gone straight out, hit the return key to make it, modify drag, and let's just position these into place. So I'm going to go and kind of follow the same guideline as my other finger. And I'm using these other views, I'm using my side view here to get the lengths correct. And then just check your work in the perspective view. This time it was much easier because I already had something to follow, but I can see it's a little too close. See how it's kind of sticking out of that finger there, so maybe I can fix it here. And see that, yes, in perspective view, now it's more centered. Okay, so let's continue that process. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Drop the drag tool, select the forearm, set up tab, create skeletons, click to the knuckle, one, two, 
three, hit the return key, modify, drag tool to correct it. And again, I'm going to follow my previous fingers as a basic template. And then come over to my side view to get this better situated. And then I'm going to look to my perspective view to verify that, yes, they are centered. That looks pretty good. Let's drop the drag tool, go to the forearm, set up, create skeletons, click out to do my last finger before the thumb. One, two, three. Return key to make it, modify drag tool. And I'm just going to bring these down and hopefully have a winner here. So I'm going to use my side view, check that against my perspective, and that finger is starting to look pretty good. Okay, so now I need to do the thumb. Let's drop the drag tool. Let's go to the Setup tab, Create Skeletons. Before we do that, let's select our forearm, Create Skeletons. I'm going to come on, this time use my, uh, my back view. And then I'm just going to click, click two more times, not three from my thumb. I'm going to have two instead of three this time. Hit the return key to make it. And then let's come over and just use our modified drag tool in the top view to get this where it should be. And then just check the thumb over here. That looks pretty good. That looks good. And then check it in your perspective view. All right, looks like we're finished. So now I can zoom out a little bit and see that this half of the body is done. But of course, because the body is symmetrical, I can mirror the other half. So let's do that. I'm going to drop my tool. I'm going to select all of the bones in this chain that I want mirrored, which would be everything down to the fingertips, shoulder socket, everything else. What you don't want to select is anything on your spinal cord. You do not want to have two spinal cords. You just want to mirror <clears throat> this half of your body. So now we zoom in nice and close. The closer the better. Go to Multiply, Mirror, and we're going to click exactly on that point of origin for that, that bone there. And boom, hit a return key to make it. Let's zoom out and see what we got. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit off over here. We can fix that. Let's go to our Skeleton tree under Setup and just check the hierarchy. And you can see this is the bone. That is referring to this bone right there that was just created. And because it's indented all the way over, we know that the parent-child relationship is correct. And so this is a child of these three bones. And if it were all the way to the left, then it would be a new parent bone, which we do not want. So this is correct. All right, we'll close that out. And what we'll do now is to address this problem over here. You notice that as I zoom in, the hand looks like it's sticking out. So let's grab, I'm gonna lasso, I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button. I'm gonna lasso all of these skeletons in the hand. Oops, I'm gonna deselect them first because I had my other hand selected, and now we'll lasso only those in the hand. And we're just going to use the top view. I'm going to hit the T key to move, and I'm just going to move that back so that it's centered. You see how that, losing my other views, that seems to be now perfectly in position. Now, if you have other issues with the elbow, you can use the drag tool to fix that. If there's any other problems with the shoulder, but that looks pretty close. It doesn't have to be as exact as it does in the hand, so I think we're good there. All right, so now we've got two arms and the back. Let's quickly build our, finish our upper body. I'm gonna select this last 
bone in the backbone, the back chain with the crate skeletons, and I'll just go up to the neck and then up to the skull. Now that's one way I could click and add three bones. Another way would be to simply move the positioning of these bones. Let's try that instead. So I'm going to drop that selection. I'm going to go to modify drag. I'm just going to drag this upwards to the base of the neck. Something like that. All right. And so now I'm going to select this bone again. I'm going to go to setup, create skeletons, add a neck, and then go up all the way through the skull. Two bones, neck and skull. All right. Now, in this, using the modify drag tool once again, I can go to my side view and see if there's any corrections. This looks pretty well centered. I think that looks good. Um, if there's any sort of corrections I need to make in terms of the length of the back, now that I lengthen that upper back, I can just sort of equalize the spinal column a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right, we're done with our upper body. Let's work on the legs. So I'm here in back view again. I'm going to drop my drag tool. I'm going to go to the setup tab and choose create skeletons. And I'm just going to click and drag down to the knee and then click to the where the ankle should be and then down to the foot. And from there, I'm going to switch over to the side view. And I'm just going to go click, click to get the toe and the foot. I hit the return key to make it. You can see that this is way too close to the edge of the mesh. So I'm going to use my modify drag tool once again to get this better situated. Let's put that in the middle. Let's put this straight so it's vertical. That looks pretty good there. Now, get that more in the middle there. <clears throat> now let's go to the top view. And we can see that from the top view, this is sticking out. It's not in the middle of the foot. So let's use our drag tool to reposition that, get that better situated. And that looks better. OK, so now we got the bones more centered. We can take a look in our perspective view, see how that looks now. Looking pretty well centered. Now I want to add a couple bone spurs. And bone spurs are used to prevent problems with bending. So what we're going to do in this case is to use our side view. I want to put a bone spur in the knee, and I want a bone spur in the ankle. So here's what we do. I'm going to select, deselect the drag tool. I'm going to select the bone above the bone spur in the chain, the hierarchy. And then I choose Setup, Create Skeletons, and I just click straight out. There's my bone spur, hit the return key to make it. Again, for the heel, the bone above it would be the ankle. So I click Create Skeletons, put the heel in place, return key to make it. I want to do the same thing now with the elbows. So I'm going to grab the upper arm and choose Create Skeletons and just come straight out. Return key to make it. Let's go to the perspective view to make sure all that looks as it should terms of the positioning of those spurs. And the knee, the heel, everything looks good. Now again, those spurs are to prevent crimping from happening when you bend the arm or the knee. So this will make it look like there's a bone in there. All right, the next thing we need to do is to mirror our lower half because we've got one leg, but we need the other now. So let's mirror it. To do that, we're going to select polygon edit mode, select all of the bones in the leg, all the way down to the tip of, tip of the toes. We'll go to multiply mirror, and we're going to zoom in nice and close to see what we're doing. And we're going to click right there in the middle between 
the length. So we're looking at that dark line there that represents the middle, the zero axis point. Let's go ahead and click on it. Boom, there's our leg, hit the return key to make it. Let's see how we did. Did that come out right? Yes, it seems pretty well centered. If it weren't, you could always move it with the move tool, just like you did with a hand. It's not the end of the world. Or you could undo it and try it again, but you know, for the most part, just get it centered. Now you can just sort of step back and look at this and see, okay, is everything in place? That looks pretty good. All right, we're ready to go further. So let's go ahead now and send this over. Let's send it over to the layout so that we can then correct our gimbal lock and set it all up. So let's do that. First thing I need to do before I send it over is to cut and paste the bones. This is from layer one, or excuse me, from layer two into layer one. So go to edit cut from layer two, go to layer one and edit paste. So that they are now, the skeletons are in layer one. Hit the S key to save it and then give it a name if you haven't already, but save up that mesh. Now I can send it over to layout and let me just make sure that I think my layout has this model in it already. So I'm gonna, before I do that, I'm gonna clear it, make sure it's clean. Let me go to layout and just clean this out by going to file, clear scene. And yes, clear it out, thank you very much. Okay, now I can send this over. So I'm gonna choose send object to layout. And there's Flash now sitting in layout. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to convert these skeletons into bones. Let's do that. We're going to go to setup, CVT skeletons or convert skeletons into bones. And there they are. So now they're existing in this body. I'm in wireframe view mode, by the way, if you're not. Go ahead and zoom in. And now we'll just like for gimbal lock. And we know that gimbal lock tends to happen with parent bones, especially on the Y axis. So if we click on it, you can see the Y key to see it. And you can see, yes, there's the gimbal lock, the red and the blue sharing the same plane, heading and bank. So let's fix that. We're gonna go to set up bone twist and we're gonna rotate 90 degrees, more or less. That looks pretty close to 90. We're gonna then hit the Y key. We're gonna then record the pivot rotation and then restore the bone with the R key and then the next child bone as well to make sure they're all restored, reactivated, ready to go. Check that bone and yes, now we have the full axis of rotation. <clears throat> Gimbal lock fixed. All right, let's go now to the X bone we expect. And yes, sure enough, we can look at it again. There's the gimbal lock. Same culprits. Oops. There he is. Okay, so let's now go to bone twist once again. Rotate that 90 degrees, more or less. Y key record pivot rotation, and then restore those bones. Make sure you get them all reactivated, including that little bone spur. Check it. And yes, the gimbal lock looks like it's fixed. One more time, in case you missed it. Bone twist, 90 degrees. Y key, record pivot rotation, and then restore those bones with the R key. Check that little. Oh, looks like I missed the bone spur when I was selecting those bones, so it didn't mirror. The heel mirrored, but this bone spur didn't. That's okay, well, I can fix that. Select this bone. Let's go to an, a orthographic view. Um, well, in fact,
what I can do in this situation is I can go to, let me just change from perspective view to like a side view. Let's go to right view. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the bone tools under setup to draw a child bone. So I'm going to go to the add menu and choose draw child bones. And what I do is I just click and drag outwards from that point to create my child bone, hit the return key to make it. And oops, created a motion key. I was thinking I was in modeler. I don't need a return key here. All right. So now let's go back and check my perspective view and see what we did. So there it is. There's the new bone and it is indeed part of the hierarchy. So we're good to go even though we left that out, or I did by accident. So you probably don't need to do that. You probably are fine, but I forgot to select it or I, I missed it somehow. So I just thought that's, I would show you how to use the bone tools to fix it. Okay, so at this point, we've got our gimbal lock fixed. We can, we've got our full angle of rotations. Everything is possible. So at this point, we're ready to add weight maps and to go ahead and set up some inverse kinematics if we need to. So I'll leave it there at this point for this lesson. And um, this is the workflow basically to get us a humanoid type bone structure in place using skeletons and using the techniques that we've learned uh, thus far.